ready to go. We're going. So my name is Chris Edwards, and uh, I'm chief architect at Casasa. We used to be called Bankview, in case you were wondering. Um, and I just want to give you a little walkthrough of uh, my life and the mistakes that have made me who I am today. I had a pretty normal childhood growing up, but I did know from a very young age that I wanted to be a computer programmer because I heard this voice in the back of my head saying, Shall we play a game? Yeah, I watched the movie War Games and just absolutely loved it. And I was fascinated. And I realized that I wanted to write games, so I begged my parents for a computer. And finally, they got me one. It was the Commodore 64. It was Ooh. awesome. And it was like angels were singing the first time that I turned this thing on. I mean, and I couldn't get enough of it. I can't count the number of my times that my parents caught me under a blanket in my room, hiding way after bedtime. But through all of that, I learned how to program. And from there, it was really just all downhill. Uh, I learned how to program in Turbo Pascal. I got my first paid gig working with DBase. Uh, then I went to college to learn real programming languages like oh, COBOL or Fortran or <laughs> IBM 370 assembly language. It, it may not have always been fun, but it produced me, an awesome programmer, or so I thought. So I used to, I, I thought that I had in introduced the concept of continuous delivery long before the book was out because I was working on the server. And I thought, hey, every time I compile, it's delivered. <laughs> Come to find out, that's not a real good idea to do on the server to compile your code, but you live and you learn. <laughs> then I went and made the trek to object-oriented programming. And about the same time that I learned about that, I read the Design Patterns book. If you can kind of imagine what's coming next, I produced this wonderful piece of code. Well, <laughs> I don't know why I went blank. This. It was awesome. It could do anything. And I got to tell you, I used every single design pattern in the book. Everything was great until we hired a team to come check it out and look at the code. Uh, well, let's just say they uh, didn't like it too much. They actually asked me to rewrite the code. I thought the guys were crazy, but I did have a very good friend on the team, and I trusted him. And so we talked about it, and we rewrote the code. And when we did, we were very presently surprised. It took us three months to rewrite what had taken me a year and a half to build. It was a third the size and had twice the functionality. All of that was possible simply because I let go of my baby, of that code, and listened to what the team had. It was a great success. And after that, you know, I, I felt a little bit more awesome. But then I got a job working on legacy code. And I've just got to tell you, if you don't know this, it's true. Legacy code sucks donkey balls. It is horrible. I couldn't make anything work that I'd worked on before. All the successes I'd had in this team, every time I tried to do it again, it was a train wreck. I couldn't figure it out, so I finally just kind of resigned myself to realize one size does not fit all. Each team is different. Each project is different. They have unique challenges and problems, and you have to meet the solution to those problems. But I didn't figure this out till long after. So at the time, I just felt kind of clueless. That became very obvious whenever I got my review. They said, Chris, you read something and you take it as gospel. You're too dogmatic about things, and you, know, you just need to kind of take what you read with a grain of salt. Stop regurgitating everything that you read and expecting yourself to be right. It doesn't work that way. I felt a little less awesome after that. But honestly, they were right. I didn't have a healthy degree of skepticism in what I did. And I had some very strong opinions that actually derailed the team. It's not that strong opinions are bad, but they need to be weakly held opinions. If you're wrong in your opinion, you need to change it. Or if there's a better way to do something, use that and adopt that practice. If otherwise, you're not just strong opinion, you're just stubborn. So I wanted to get me another job, and, uh, but I wasn't done making mistakes, of course. There was a time that I deleted the database in production. I thought I was on the dev server. Uh, apparently, those compliance guys know what they're talking about when they say they don't want devs in production. Or there's the time I used an object relational mapper to do bulk imports of data. That didn't work too well either. Um, apparently, there's a reason that they have bulk operations in SQL. Probably ought to use them. And many more times, I designed the equivalent of a space shuttle just across the street. Classic overdesign problems. So what did I learn from all of these things? Well, I learned I'm not this guy. I don't know it all. And every time I think I do know it all, come to find out, I stop learning because I'm not paying attention to what other people have said. I think I already know it. So one thing that makes that obvious is every time I looked at my old code, 
It was like, holy crap, did I write that? But my code was constantly getting better every year, and I'm learning more every year. But I'm still going to fall down. But when I do fall down, I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to smile, and I'm going to keep going. So if you see me making mistakes, come alongside me. Pat me on the back and join me. The road to awesome is paved with mistakes. But as long as we learn from those mistakes, we're going to get there. Thank you.